you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. There are outlines in the back. If you missed one, we will get you one. Matthew chapter 6. Tonight I want to talk to you about three secret disciplines. Three secret disciplines. Number one, give in secret. You're supposed to give in secret. Number two, pray in secret. Pray in secret. Number three, fast in secret. Give, pray, and fast. And uh, I was originally thinking about doing this on a Sunday night, but uh, I really decided Wednesday night is a better night for this uh, because these are disciplines uh, that are very, very difficult to do. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just saying, you know, y'all, you you who come on Wednesday are some of the most dedicated Christians we have. You know, I'm not trying to make you feel good or whatever, but I just I just feel like, you know, uh, you know, we're we're in a place to where there's almost, you know, new Christians. I, I would not start new Christians out with this, uh, but uh, this is really applicable uh, to folks that are mature in Christ and uh, see uh, the importance, you know, of, of Wednesday night Bible study. You know, when we hear the word secret, we tend to get suspicious about why, about why something or someone feels the need to uh, keep someone or or some information hidden from others. The word secret, what I'm trying to say, sometimes has a negative connotation. In most instances, we shouldn't hide secrets, but in today's text, Jesus tells us that we should keep three things to ourselves when it comes to spiritual disciplines. God and Jesus wants us to have in our lives. Let's look at these red-letter words from Jesus teaching his disciples. So there's three secret disciplines. And folks, uh, to be successful in your Christian life, you have to have discipline, okay? You have to. Uh, There's just just no other way about it. So let's look in Matthew 6, verse 1. Take heed that you do not uh, do your charitable deeds before men seen by them. Otherwise, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. And here he is just talking about our giving. Uh, and the key in all this, let me tell you this right off the bat, is you need to give from your heart, you need to pray from your heart, and you need to fast from your heart. All three of these cannot be something you go through the motions at. And, and uh, even in those days, a lot of times they were talking about helping poor people out. And folks, uh, we should always try to help the underdog and help the poor. I love our food bank. Uh, I think it's wonderful. Uh, We we can really help people there, and that is a form of giving. Verse 2, therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in synagogues and in streets. And again, here, a charitable deed, uh, it could be uh, giving, a, a part of your giving. Let somebody know, you know, well, I gave to this or I gave a certain amount. Uh, when I was a youth minister in Lawton, we went through a, a program, and it was called Together We Build. And one of the things they ask us to do as a staff is to uh, give, tell, tell our church uh, what we were going to give in a five-year period of time. And I'm telling you, I really struggled with that because of these verses, okay? And it was, uh, this Together We Build uh, was a firm out of Dallas that basically raised money, okay? And the more I I thought about it and the more I grew in Christ, I realized, you know, there was a reason that I was uncomfortable for that, with that, okay? Because our giving should be done in secret. And he's really talking about the Pharisees here. He's talking about how you know, they want people to know, you know, what they give and what they have given to and who they've helped. 
and amounts on things, all right? And of course, we know a hypocrite is someone who says one thing and does another. And Jesus was very, very hard on them about that, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. And what it basically says is, do you want the praise of God or do you want the praise of men? When you brag about how much you give or what you've done for others, then you are getting, you, you will get people to say, well, isn't he a good guy? Isn't this? And, and Jesus is saying, man, that's not what it's about. Okay, it's to help people that need help. And, and you don't say anything about it. Okay, verse three. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And again, I think this has to do also with the motive, the motive, okay? You, you know, if you compare it to other people in giving, or if you just think, well, this is what I can't afford, or, you know, you know, my whole deal on the right hand and left hand is that if God tells you to give something, you need to get, give it, okay? Don't make, you know, don't, don't try to bargain with God. Don't say, I'll do this, and then later on, I'm going to do that. All right, if God tells you a certain amount, or if God tells you to give something away, then you need to do that. Verse 4, that your charitable deed may be in secret, there's that word, and your Father who sees it in secret will himself reward you openly. And let me tell you what this last verse means. And we know this, you cannot outgive God. You can't do it, all right? And it makes no sense to the average person. They feel like when you give things away, you lose things. But I'm telling you to the Christian, when you give things away, and it may not, you, it may not be you get your money back, okay? Because we always associate giving with money, okay? Your health. I mean, what, 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 what would you pay to be healthy your whole life, okay? And there's other ways Uh, that God can reward you. But he says, we need to give in secret. And an example is Acts chapter 5. Acts 5, you know about this story, Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, The last last thing, uh, you know, the son of encouragement, Barnabas came, uh, and it's not on your deal, but I'm just setting this up, that he had sold some land and he gave so much to uh, the church, and people were giving to the church. But a certain man in verse 1 named Ananias with Sapphira and his wife sold possession, and he kept part of the proceeds. His wife, also being aware of it, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie with the Holy Spirit and keep back the price of the land for yourself? Well, how did Peter know that? Well, folks, you have to understand Acts chapter 2 just had taken place. The Holy Spirit was strong there. 3,000 people got saved there. There was revival in the church there. They were baptizing thousands or at least hundreds of of people, and all this was going on. And the Holy Spirit told him, hey, you, you know, this isn't right. You know, why are you doing this? Folks, we don't have to do that. We shouldn't give to brag about it, okay, or to match someone else's, okay? Uh, We should always pray to God about giving. And it says, and while it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but you have lied to God. Folks, you, you know, you're getting on dangerous ground when you lie to God, okay? I mean, it's bad enough we lie to men, but to try to make yourself more spiritual than it is, and, and then again, The Bible says, Ananias, hearing the word, fell down and breathed his last, and fear came upon all who heard these things. Then the young men rose and wrapped him and carried him out and buried him. And about three hours later, his wife came in, knowing, not knowing what had happened. Tell me what you uh, sold the land for. And she said, yes, for so much. And Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband at the door they will carry you out. And immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her out and buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon 
all the church and upon all who heard these things. And I've heard preachers say, well, aren't you glad it wouldn't happen in a Baptist church because we'd be carrying a lot of folks out. Folks, that's not the point, okay? The point is you need to give from the heart. You need to be sincere about that giving, and you don't need to brag about it, okay? They, they gave, but it was the motive that was wrong. They gave to impress others, and we should never do that. And the exact opposite is in Mark chapter 12. Go to Mark chapter 12 with me. Just a few verses. Now, Jesus sat opposite Mark 12, verse 41. Now, Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. All right? And many who were rich put in much. And folks, we are impressed by amounts. Okay? We really are. And then one poor widow came in and threw two mites, which make a quadrant. And so he called his disciples to himself, and he said unto them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put more than all those who have given to the treasury. And folks, when it's given, you know, God is not impressed with amounts. God is impressed, again, with the motive and, and giving from the heart, okay? And we know what Jesus was saying. These guys gave out of abundance. Okay, I mean, if you're a millionaire and throw $12,000 in there, I mean, and, and I'm not saying that, you know, it's not wrong to do that, but it's, you're talking about proportionate giving. This lady gave everything she had. Okay, she was broke. She was poor. But yet when the Holy Spirit told her to give, she gave everything. And I believe with all my heart, it doesn't say the rest of the story, I believe God Rewarded, rewarded, her, rewarded her, and Jesus rewarded her, you know, many, many fold. And it says, verse 44, so they all put out of the put out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty, and in all that she had, her whole livelihood. Can you imagine giving everything that you have to the Lord? And I'm, I'm not saying that's what God wants to do. You know, I mean, you know, I know these Sometime health and wealth boys, you know, you know, you sow those seeds. You'll give this. I promise you, you'll get this. And folks, again, motive is everything. And when it comes to giving, Jesus said we need to give in secret. The second thing we need to do is we need to pray in secret. We need to pray in secret. Look at verse five. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on street corners, that they may be seen by men. Again, very same thing, same phrase in the first part about giving. They are giving uh, to impress others. Uh, surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And folks, I'm all for prayer meetings I'm all for prayer groups, okay? We have a group that prays Saturday night at 5 o'clock right here in the sanctuary. We have a group that prays uh, Sunday morning at 8.30 in uh, the room, our, our room, our conference room. And I'm all for that. Uh, you know, when we're getting ready for revivals, I'm all for prayer meetings. But what you have to understand is, to me, you are closest to God and your most effective praying is when it's just you and God. Why? Because God can read your mind. God can uh, know your motives. God can read your heart. And I truly bl believe how we pray secretly affects how we pray publicly. Okay? And he's just saying there, one thing is, you know, people are impressed by how long people pray. All right, we had a deacon, his name was Brother Jess, and when he ended services, we as youth would get our deals and we'd click our watches. I'm, I'm telling you, he'd pray 10 to 12 minutes to end a service. And again, I wasn't judging him, I was just a kid, okay? But I'm just saying, you know, how long something is, a prayer is, 
doesn't mean that it's an effective prayer. Just because somebody else prays a certain amount of time doesn't mean that's how long you should pray. You know, I've read books, and I am not kidding you folks, where I read one, it's, it's been about a year ago, where a guy gets up, uh, uh, and he is, he's, he's a pastor, and he gets up and he prays three straight hours. And, and I just, you know, I'm looking at that, and, you know, wow. I mean, in some ways, I do admire him, but it's not how long you pray, folks. It's when you pray in secret, and when you connect to God, and when you pour your heart out to God, and the other thing, you know, about praying in groups versus, uh, I don't know about you, but I would have been ADD. I would have been on Redland when I was a kid if they had it back then because of my attention span. But when I'm by myself, when I'm praying, in, and again, your prayer closet, uh, I, I, do, I, I do, folks, I wake up every night, every night. Every night I wake up and I start praying. And I literally pray myself back to sleep. In those times that it's just me and God, and normally it's somewhere around 3 o'clock in the morning, that's what your prayer closet is. It's just you and God and the Holy Spirit. And it says, and your Father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. Verse 7, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard uh, for their many words. And that was kind of a battle with the Pharisees. You know, boy, that dude prayed a long time. Man, I wish I could learn to pray that long. Folks, just pray from the heart. There's no time limit. There's no time limit. Verse 7, and when you pray, oh, or verse 8, therefore do not, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have in need of before you ask him. Okay, and I've even had... Youth asked me before, well, why should we pray? If God already knows what you need, you know what? Why don't he just give it to us? Now, folks, prayer is communion with God. Prayer is acknowledging God as the resource of everything that we are and everything that we have. Prayer is seeking God's face. Prayer is, and, and I, I always associate prayer with quiet time. I think one of the biggest mistakes uh, especially new Christians make, is they've learned to pray, but they have not learned to listen. What do you think a quiet time is? That's when nobody talks but the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's not you talking. And we all need to pray. We need to go. You know, I've heard the five points, you know, intercession, and, and I, I understand that, and all those are good. But somewhere in your prayer, you need to be quiet, and you need to listen to God for the answer to your prayers. And that's what he is speaking about here. And notice all these are Jesus' words, all right? This chapter is in Jesus' word, in red letters. And then verse 9, in this manner, therefore pray. And again, I've heard people say it's the Lord's Prayer, and I've heard that we shouldn't call it the Lord's Prayer because it asks about forgive us of our debts, you know, you know, Jesus never did sin, so he didn't have to ask for forgiveness. Some people call it the disciples' prayer. Uh, in my Bible, it is marked the model prayer, okay? And, and I do think you can have models, all right? But whatever, I knew we grew up with the Lord's Prayer. But the bottom line is, Jesus said, this is how you pray. And folks, it is different than some religions, okay? There are some religions that pray the same prayers over and over. You memorize these prayers, you know, you know, someone will say this, and then you respond back. And the problem I have with that is it's too mechanical for me. All right, I want to pray from the heart. I want to pray, uh, you, know, uh, you know, words words that are on my heart and what God has allowed me to feel and, 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 and think and, and, you know, petition, you see. And so he says, our Father, and we all know this, in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, and here's the key to effective praying. Okay, I've underlined this line in my Bible. The key to getting your prayer answered is your will be done. Folks, that's how we pray. Because you can say what you want, the bottom line is our will and God's will is not the same. 
you know, not, not all the time. Okay, we need to pray for God's will to be done. We really do. And it says, on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And you can see the last part of the Lord's Prayer. And folks, I truly believe this is why a lot of prayers are not answered. Okay? You know why? Because we won't forgive others. Because we are holding grudges. Because we are talking about certain people. Because, you know, and, and it can be Christian to Christian, folks. And if God forgives us, folks, we need to forgive others. I mean, we all came to God as sinners. We all need God. And if God can forgive me of my sin, and I, I just, I know I quote 1 John 1 9 a lot, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm telling you, we need to forgive others. We really do. And, and verse 14 and 15 also uh, speaks of this. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And folks, I believe there are many people who miss the blessings of God because they will not forgive. Matter of fact, I want to say it's Psalm 66, 18. I'm pretty sure that's right. If I hold iniquity in, me, iniquity in my heart, all right, God does not hear my prayer, okay? So really, I, and I, I say this every chance I get, your first words in prayer out of your mouth are, are, should be, God, forgive me where I failed you today. God, forgive me of my sins and my trespasses and my thoughts and my attitudes and even my actions and my words. That should start a prayer. That should start your prayer. Matter of fact, Matthew 5, just look across the page there. Matthew 5, 23. How, how serious is God about this forgiveness? Look what verse 23 says. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. What is he saying? He's not saying giving is more important or not more important. He's saying if you want your prayers to be heard and be effective, it's so serious that if you have wronged somebody and, or, some, or somebody has wronged you and you can't forgive that, I'm telling you, leave your gift at the altar. You go take care of that, and then you come back to your prayer closets. And it's like I said Sunday, folks, uh, Prayer is one of the easiest things to do, but it's one of the hardest disciplines to maintain. And I tell you why. I tell you why. Satan wants to keep us busy. And we may even be busy in church activities, but I am telling you, to a growing Christian, prayer is one of the most important activities and one of the most important disciplines in your life. Forgiveness is a key. Number three, not only give in secret, not even pray in secret, we need to fast in secret. Look at verse 16. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their, face, uh, their uh, faces, and they appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have your, their reward. And in the Old Testament, the only day that was, uh, you know, that people fasted on was once a year, the Day of Atonement. All right? The Israelites, God asked everybody to fast on the Day of Atonement. Now, the, in the New Testament, the, uh, the Pharisees and the scribes, they would have fast 
they would fast on Mondays and Thursdays, okay? But just like Jesus is saying, you could kind of figure out who's fasting and who's not, okay? They would disfigure their face, and they'd get this poor, sad look about them, all right? And then somebody say, why are you so sad? And then, well, I can't talk about it. Well, is there something wrong? Well, I'm fasting right now, okay? And folks, when you tell someone you're fasting, all right, again, that's like, uh, you know, that's like letting them in on just, and, and, and the thing about, I'm trying to put this a certain way, the thing about, number one is, fasting is almost a lost thing right now, okay? I know there are people that fast, but I do not think there are a lot of people that fast. And, and again, uh, it, it used to be a, a, a part of my life and my disciplines, and I, I really need to get back to it, and I'm going to get back to it. I'm saying this uh, publicly, not when I'm going to do it, but that I know the benefits of fasting. And, and again, it's spending time with God and not relying. Folks, I know I am addicted to food. Okay, I wake up thinking about food. I go to sleep thinking about food. I look like I love food. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with eating. Okay, but to set that time aside, there's different kinds of fast. Okay, there's, you know, a, a, a water fast. You know, there's liquid fast. There's all kinds of ways you can do it. But the bottom line in fasting is not just skipping a meal. It is spending that time you would eat feeding on the Word of God, spending time with God. Okay, and again, these scribes and Pharisees wanted, to, wanted people to know, number one, that they were fasting, and they let everybody know that they were doing that. In verse 17, but you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to be uh, two men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place. And your father, and, and again, in the Old Testament, I'm telling you that high priest, he literally bathed from head to toe and put on those clean garments before he went into the Holy of Holies. And what I, what I uh, associate that is with sin, okay, dirt, dirt, okay? And, and again, I know we're not living in the Old Testament days, uh, but, but I think there's some, some symbolic things there that are very, very important. But your father, so that you do not appear to be fasting, but, uh, but to your father who is in the secret place, there's that place, again, three times he says, secret place. This is Jesus. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And again, folks, one thing in all of this and in all these disciplines that we have, we have to do it with humility. Okay? Humility is the key. It's not telling somebody that, hey, I'm on a three-day fast right now. All right, don't, don't bother me. I got a headache. I don't feel good but bless God, I'm going to finish this fast, all right? It's sincerely giving it to the Lord, sincerely seeking God's face, okay? And I'm just saying, to apply it nowadays, there are certain things that, you know, like if I was going to somehow, and, and again, don't get the wrong impression of this, if I was looking or a church was looking at me and I was seeing whether God wanted me to move or not, I'm promise you I would do some fasting, okay? Uh, big purchases. If I, if I was getting a house and, you know, I'm, I'm going to sink hundreds of, you know, thou, thousands of dollars into a house, I guarantee you I'd be doing some fasting. And, and it's, just, it's just your big decisions, your spiritual decisions also. You know, if, if I was, felt like I was being called to the mission field or called to, to being a missionary or, or a, a staff member, man, I would be doing some fasting, okay? And that's seeking uh, the Lord's face. Last scripture, Acts 27. Acts 27. We'll close with this. Acts 27. Acts 27, verse 33. 27, 33. 
And as day was about to dawn, Paul implored them to take food, a saying, Today is the 14th day you have waited and continued without food and eat nothing. Okay, and there was two reasons why uh, he was fasting. One is, you know, uh, he told them before they left, you know, you, you don't need to go on this trip. You don't need to take this. You need to wait. And we're not real good at waiting on the Lord. And then when they got out there, I'm just telling you, uh, the way the storm was going, days and days and days, they, they uh, couldn't see the sun, and they, you know, I mean, just pretty much all hope. And so Paul, you know, there just said, hey, you know, we need to fast, we need to pray, you know, and, and God, God told me, uh, or an angel told me that, hey, if, if we will do this, God will spare everyone here. And it says, verse 34, Therefore I urge you to take nourishment, for this is your survival, since not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. And my point here is, you know, God will always not only tell you to fast, he'll tell you how long to fast. Okay? You don't just make that stuff up. You don't say, well, I'm going to fast for a day. You ask God, God, how long do you want me to fast? I will say this. I know a man in Lawton, Oklahoma, and he was a pastor, and he fasted 40 days and ended up in the hospital. Okay, so you have to be careful about that. I don't, you know, I don't know the, the whole thing of the fast, of what he did, okay? But it, it needs to come from the Lord. Uh, he needs to give you a specific time uh, that you will fast. And it says, and when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when they had broken it, he, he began to eat. So what did God do? God, God told Paul, hey, the fast is over. It's done. Okay? Uh, one, one of the reasons, you know, I'm, I'm sure was, if you go two weeks fighting a storm and not eating, I'm telling you, you're really, really weak. And if you read the rest of the story, that ship was going to crash and they were going to be in there swimming and you need some energy. So God told them, hey, you know what? with what you have left, and then they threw the rest overboard because they were trying to get the boat as shallow as they could go. And the bottom line, you read the story, they all said not one person drowned. But one of the biggest problems, they did not listen to the man of God. The man of God told them they shouldn't go, and they went anyway. So, folks, we need to listen to God. And, and the keys in, in uh Fasting, faith, discipline, and listening to the Holy Spirit. That's the key to fasting. Father, thank you for this night. And God, I thank you for these three secret disciplines that you show. God, they're in your word. They're in your gospel. And God, you put them there for a reason. So God, I pray that, oh Lord, even in giving, we would give in secret, Lord. Oh. Uh, we, 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 we wouldn't brag about it. God, we'd give from the heart. We would give generously. God, there are people, I've run into them this week, uh, that have just really struggled. And God, I pray that we would listen to you and listen to when we should give it and the amount that we should give to help others. And God, in our own prayer closet, we talked about this Sunday. And God, I just pray that we would understand we need to be right with you, and we need to be right with our fellow man. And then, Lord, in fasting, Lord, I just confess to you, I, I haven't been doing what I need to be doing. And, God, I, I am, God. I'm going to do it. And, Lord, I'm not bragging before this. This is not, I'm not telling them when. But, God, I just, I just know that uh, it's important that we do this. And, God, I pray that, uh, Lord, just so many things, and the way our world is, uh, you know, we have lost family members. Uh, there are just so many reasons to fast. And God, I pray, and I know it's my flesh. It's my flesh. And God, I just ask for forgiveness for that. And God, I just pray, Lord, that we would just do the spiritual disciplines that you tell us to do. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for it is yes, it is right, and it is amen. So God, help us to adjust things. God, help us to...
do it for the right reason. God, help us to have that discipline. Really, the whole Christian life is about discipline. So God, I pray that we would have these disciplines in our lives. God, for your honor and for your glory, to hear from you, to see you work miracles. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.